What's going on everyone? My name is Avery and you're watching the Crypto News Network. This is part three of my ZeroX Explainer series, so if you missed part two, click up at the top of the screen right here to see that one. In part three of my deep dive into the protocol, I'm gonna be covering the ZeroX governance model, the newly released ZeroX protocol V2, and some additional things. Most of my info is sourced from the ZeroX blog post where there are specific posts on both the governance model and version two of the protocol. So with that being said, let's get into it. When we first start talking about governance, we need to address some of the issues associated with governance and standardized protocols like 0x. In the blockchain space, when a smart contract protocol is released and live on the network, no one can go back and change or edit that smart contract's internal logic. So when it comes to updating or changing certain functionality of a smart contract protocol, there are some issues. What must happen is a completely new smart contract must be deployed and it will either fork the network or disrupt users and processes that depend on the protocol until they opt in to that newest version. This is a huge problem when we're talking about a protocol that facilitates interoperability between dApps and moves millions and potentially billions or even trillions of dollars worth of crypto assets on a daily basis. In the context of 0x, a disruptive protocol update could invalidate all open orders and require each market participant to approve a new smart contract to access their trading balances. If the protocol forks into two versions, they could operate in parallel, neutralizing network effects created by dApp interoperability. In order to take care of some of these headaches, ZeroX made it such that the protocol token ZRX will enable a decentralized governance mechanism by the stakeholders. ZeroX protocol's pipeline of smart contracts can accommodate upgrades without downtime or disruption to markets. ZRX as a fee token enhances governance by ensuring the token distribution converges on a representative sample of protocol stakeholders over time. ZeroX protocol's transition to community governance will occur in phases that shift control to ZRX holders. So that was a mouthful, but I'll explain how it's all done in this video. It's important to note that at the time of filming this video, that the Xerox protocol governance is not finalized. Most of what I'll be presenting here is straight from the Xerox blog post on governance, which I'll link in the description for everyone to check out. Pretty much the summary of the Xerox governance is as follows. The Xerox protocol pipeline of smart contracts can accommodate upgrades without downtime or disruption to markets. Like I said before, the token will drive a governance process that allows allows stakeholders to securely execute these protocol upgrades. With that, the first thing that I'd like to point out is this governance protocol is difficult. Finding out a way for seamless updates in a decentralized manner without giving advantages to a certain party is extremely difficult. In my current understanding of the way ZeroX operates, it's not in a decentralized manner, which has been a point of criticism for many who aren't fond of the protocol. That being said, the governance structure is being worked on, but it's not final. The protocol's transition to community governance will occur in phases that shift control to token holders over time. So each phase will increase in complexity and risk, and there's a high probability that the roadmap will evolve. In this diagram, ZeroX illustrates the current plan for their governance roadmap. Within the year, they plan on enabling the token curated registry and community veto with the liquid democracy, crypto economic modeling, off-chain voting, and cross-blockchain governance coming later in the future. The token registry is a contract which stores ERC-20 token metadata, like the symbol, name, and address. That metadata serves as an on-chain reference that market participants use to verify token addresses and exchange rates before entering into a trade. The Xerox white paper proposed that Xerox stakeholders would provide this oversight of token metadata, but the registry has been centrally managed by the Xerox core team as of right now. In this first phase of the governance progression, Xerox will be transitioning from the current centralized token registry to a community-managed token curated registry, wherein the ZRX token holders will be able to add to that list. There is a very in-depth article on the token curated registries that I'll link in the description as well for people to check out. Phase two in the governance progression is community veto power. Launching a token voting scheme that hasn't been properly vetted wouldn't be the best idea for 0x. So instead, what they are doing is taking an incremental step towards that goal by launching a system that allows upgrade proposals to be submitted by the 0x core team and vetoed by ZRX holders. According to the blog post, this could happen a couple different ways. It would make it such that a community would build social consensus off-chain using some sort of voting mechanism. Contracts that would gain support would be deployed to the blockchain and a proposal would be created to add the new contract to the Xerox pipeline. At that point, the proposal is not deployed as a new part of the protocol though. What would happen next is that token holders would have a window of time during which they can veto the proposal on-chain. This is a low-stake intermediate step that Xerox 
wants to enable in order to shift influence to the community over time. Phase three is liquid democracy, using a delegate voting scheme as a potential governance system on the ZeroX roadmap. An interesting view of delegative voting is that it can allow the community to assign voting power to the current core dev team, but voting power is extremely fluid and can naturally disperse as a project matures or as incentives delineate. So just to follow up on what I've spoken on, none of these things have been implemented yet. In the current way that the thing works, I believe the protocol upgrades are done in a fairly centralized manner. Not to take away from anything that the team has done, but that is definitely a big critique that people have with ZeroX. This is a good segue into the newest protocol upgrade from ZeroX, which is version two. Pretty much what version two of the protocol is enabling is new smart contract architecture that supports new token standards with support for ER721 at launch, support for EIP712, and open source frameworks for forwarding contracts, which I think are really cool. I'll try to quickly cover what version two of the protocol is doing because I know this video is already getting pretty long. When version one was launched, the first ERC-20 tokens were just beginning to show up. Since then, there's been an explosion of ERC-20 assets as well as new assets like ERC-721. So if you've heard of CryptoKitties, that's what that is. Other non-fungible tokens, there's also tokenized securities, derivatives, and many others starting to take form. This picture represents version one of the protocol where a single proxy contract interfaces directly with other asset contracts to adjust balances. But if other assets other than ERC-20 want to be exchanged, this framework really doesn't cut it. In order to support new asset types, they would have to constantly redeploy the proxy contract to support new standards, which forces everyone to set their allowance on a new proxy contract to adjust their token balances. In version two, instead of a single proxy contract interfacing directly with other asset contracts, 0x will deploy new asset proxies for each unique asset type. In this way, to integrate support for a new asset, they wouldn't need to redeploy a proxy. Rather, they can just add a new asset proxy to the current list. With this update, it'll ship with support for ERC721, which is ETHmoji, FanBits, CryptoKitties, LAND, or other non-fungible tokens. Version 2 includes support for EIP712, which is a standard for hashing structured data. So in this MetaMask screenshot, you can see how the EIP makes it so that you can actually view the message you're signing on MetaMask. Lastly, what I believe is the most interesting part of version 2 is the forwarding contract. Currently on a decentralized exchange, you can't exchange ETH for an ERC-20 token directly. You have to go through a process called wrapping in which ETH becomes compliant with ERC-20 tokens. The ERC-20 token standard came out after ETH and because of that, ETH doesn't conform to its own Ethereum ERC-20 token standard. While wrapping ETH, all you're doing is trading your ETH for wrapped ETH via a smart contract, which effectively wraps it. To get ETH back again, all you have to do is trade it back in that smart contract. So that's, that's pretty cool on its own, but it's an extra step that is often confusing and it doesn't help with streamlining decentralized exchange usage. So zero added something pretty cool. With the forwarding contract, users can simply send ETH and the orders that they want to fill, and then the forwarding contract will wrap the ETH automatically and fill the orders in one single fell swoop, eliminating the extra step for takers. So in this diagram, you can see how the process works. The taker goes to fill an order using normal unwrapped ETH. The forwarding contract takes that and wraps the ETH and sends it along to the exchange and asset proxy dispatcher. The taker gets back the tokens they purchased with ETH. This is a small addition that will make decentralized exchange via 0x a little bit easier. So that's about all I could fit in this video. There were a couple things I couldn't cover for version 2 of the protocol, such as the atomic order matching and batch settlement, taker abstraction, and support for new signature types. I'll link both the governance blog post and version 2 of the blog post in the description. They talk about that in those blog posts. If you liked how I explained things, go ahead and toss me a like and a subscribe. That would be fantastic. If you like 0x or dApps in general, please share this video. If there's anything I missed or got wrong in the video, please comment under the video and call me out. It'd be great. We're all learning here, so let's keep the conversation going. I look forward to chatting with you in the comments below. Thanks for watching, and I'll see you again next time.